bipartisan backing is important. But some critics have described it as going easy on dangerous criminals. Former Attorney General Jeff Sessions was one of First Step's biggest opponents, and he would have had discretion over which prisoners could access rehab programs. He's now gone. We spoke with Jesse Kelly, a criminal justice policy analyst, about why she believes the bill is necessary. Jesse, this First Step Act has been a big deal, and it's been years in the making. You happen to have been in the room with many of the people who make these decisions. So if you could tell me just your one, two, three on this criminal justice reform. Of course, primarily, it's going to be a first step towards reentering society. So the programs that will be provided for those incarcerated are going to help them when they're returning to society. Two, it's going to shorten the amount of time people are actually having to stay incarcerated, which is meaningful for those people who aren't violent. Mm -hmm. So if you can be released on some sort of um, preliminary basis into a halfway house or into home confinement, then that's going to happen for you. Okay. And then the third thing I want to highlight is just the benefits for populations um, who deserve special care in prisons. So the idea of shackling pregnant women that's abolished in this bill. Also mm. there is a provision to release elderly um, or terminally ill prisoners once they are at a certain state of, of their life. Compassionate release. Yes. Okay and this only applies to those who have been charged and found guilty under federal crimes right? Not that's state right. crimes. That's correct. All right. Also this is a rare bipartisan, and I rarely get to say that, so I wanted to drag it out a bit. This is a rare bipartisan bill, and it's a big deal. It is. Yes, it was introduced in the House um, by two co-sponsors, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you have the representative from Georgia, and then you have the representative from New York coming together to introduce the First Step Act originally, and that focused more on these prison programs preparing for reentry. When it moved to the Senate, you had a few things taken into consideration. There was a conservative sentencing bill that was in the works. There was Cory Booker's Dignity for Women Act that was in the works. And both of those things sort of came together to form this nice package. I see it got folded in. We saw the president come out after heavy lobbying. We hear behind the scenes by Jared Kushner, his son-in-law. Um, it has had a little resistance in some quarters of the conservative. Uh, movement like Tom Cotton who says it's going to be too soft. This is a jailbreak. What are your thoughts on this? Unfortunately, I think that that might just be um, a lack of education. Uh -huh. There are some sentencing reforms. Um, primarily, there is a revision to the three strike rule. And I think that most people are pretty familiar. That establishes some mandatory minimums for each subsequent crime you're convicted of. Well, now, instead of a mandatory minimum for your third strike being life, mm -hmm. it's reversed back to 25 years. And in no way is that soft on crimes. A 25-year sentence is still very lengthy. So are they going to actually try to get people ready to re-enter society with all the rights and responsibilities that that entails? Yes, and I think that you made a key point here when you start talking about correctional education, right? And so what is really special to me about this bill, because I work on both the state level and the federal level when it comes to criminal justice policies, we're seeing some of the best policies that states have already implemented being brought into this act. Mm. So for example, Michigan has instituted this program called Vocational Village, where they train technical skills for inmates and once they're released, they help them obtain the proper licensing or any requirements that they would need to go immediately into that type of work. Okay. And so you're seeing the federal uh, bill pull up some of those most successful provisions that states are already implementing. What would that mean if I want to become a, um, let's say, a hairstylist, that I would get my, my license before I leave, or if I want to become a plumber, I can maybe become certified? Perhaps, uh -huh. right? So that's the ultimate goal. Some states would obviously need to reform their occupational licensing schemes too, okay. um, but this would go hand in hand <laughs> with that, right? So we want to provide people with the avenue to provide for themselves. You know, there's a lot of enthusiasm. Is the criminal justice system perfect? Everyone would say, no. Is this bill perfect? 